joining us around the world. Welcome to Le Mans for the 87th running of the great endurance race. Oh, no, no. For nearly a century, people have been descending on this racetrack to compete against like-minded drivers. A true test across 24 hours, twice around the clock, is just a ridiculous idea. 25 years of motorsport and every race when I start my art is 180. The life of the driver is in my end. Three men at board on the grid. You have the whole world looking at you. The biggest race of the year is going to start and the pressure is on. Please clear the grid immediately. Seconds. Okay, fire up. Green, green, green. Green flag. The 87th running of the world's greatest race, the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Intensive down in the garages as the various teams watch their cars. Princess Charlene of Monaco will wave the French trick alert. The 24 Hours of Le Mans is underway. to prepare yourself for Le Mans and for Nürburgring, that's going to be tough. Nürburgring is tough enough on its own, you know, you don't need Le Mans one week before. I'm Kevin Estre, Porsche factory driver, driving the car number 92 in Le Mans and the 911 for Nürburgring. The endurance racing for a driver, I think mentally and physically, it's really, really hard for them. I think it helps a lot to go on the mountain so that he is a bit more relaxed and focused again on the race. I think that's where you get the energy back for two 24-hour race in two weeks. You have to be strong and it makes a difference between a good endurance driver and average one. Being a professional racing driver is all about risk. I think my strength is in, let's say, the moment where you have to push to overtake or to stay in front. Where I take a bit more risks than other drivers. I just do it with the instinct I have. But it's very easy to be the guy which made the difference to the guy which made the silly mistakes which, uh, you know, destroy your, your victory or your championship. Kevin has an ego, sure, because uh, everybody on the track wants to be the first. I'm just scared that something happened on the track, but when you see him racing, he needed to be happy.
We're going to do 10 laps straight out the box. And Kevin drives the bulk of the morning. Lunch break is an hour and a half. What? With no planned big changes. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, not you. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, well, you like a <laughs> Monza was the first time we were in a testing situation with the engineer, data engineer, and the three drivers and our mechanics as well. Same 2018 winning crew. So it was great to be there because we had good memories from last year. It's very hard to replicate Le Mans on any other track because it's so unique. So we try to go to the one which suits the most, and it's Monza. We wanted to gather a lot of data and uh, see the effect of the setup on the car. Just fucking boot here. successful in endurance, you need to work well with the team, you need to trust your engineer, trust your teammate. I'm driving the whole season in the World Endurance Championship with my mate Michael Christensen. It's very good to have a friend as a teammate because you need a lot of respect, a lot of trust. We are different character but very complementary. We have three drivers. So Lawrence comes from the US Championship. They use the same car, but with a different setup. He comes in our car and has to do some compromise and suit to our setup. I'm Lawrence Vantor. I'm a Porsche Works driver, and I drive the 92 in Le Mans and the 911 in Nürburgring. Kevin and Michael, we get along very well. Winning Le Mans together makes you bond a little bit more. We're kind of like three soldiers going to a war. You have to have each other's back. Three, eight, three, two, one, go. But still, it's strange position sometimes. I'm the third guy helping them out, and especially this year where they're fighting for the driver championship. So try it not to think about it and just act as I was there full season. I think that's the way to approach it. Spent five years at Audi without wanting to be arrogant. I think we won pretty much everything which we started in. And then the opportunity with Porsche came along to do GT project in America, which race car driver doesn't want to be a Porsche driver. That's <laughs> carrot in the nose. It's lecker. It may look from the outside as a race driver with this jet set life, but I've always been very happy to be home with my wife, with the baby. They always say when you get a kid, you lose some tense, but I don't think it's true. Once you put your helmet on, you don't think about the other stuff. The desire to win is the same as before. Just like the feeling of speed and being on the edge, doing something which potentially could go wrong makes you feel alive. They've never done 24 hours back to back, and especially not on this scale. Le Mans is intense preparation for two or three weeks before. A really big event with a lot of pressure. It's the one everybody wants to win. And then directly after, we need to go to Nürburgring, which is less preparation, but mentally tougher, physically also tougher. Endurance racing is not just about being the quickest driver, doing a great start and driving away. You're encountering a lot of difficulties and obstacles on the way, which require speed, but require experience and maturity and staying calm. But then it's a 24 hour race. Imagine what can happen in 24 hours. Everyone is just seeing Le Mans as one race, one Saturday, Sunday. But two weeks before the race, you have the official test. 
is the first time you will have all the drivers, all teams, all crews, all the competitors on track. I'm Pascal Zorlinden, I'm director of Factory Motorsport at Porsche Motorsport. I lead projects from a white piece of paper until being on the podium at the race weekend. Going into Le Mans, we had two cars fighting for the drivers' championship, 91 and 92. Definitely 92 was the favorites. For 91, they have to win to still keep this chance of championship if 92 gets into troubles. So the pressure was more on 91 than 92. Now the only thing is, right side of the garage or left side. We are a team and we work together. Well, it's a little bit touching, but... But when the race starts, the other car is the first of the rivals. I'm uh, Luca Masset, race engineer uh, of car 91 in Le Mans and car number one uh, on Norwood Green. The race engineer uh, is the one to mix together the human parts that are the driver, that are the mechanic, with the technology and put all together. Try again too. 110 now is too much. From my point of view, I love endurance race because it's not just to set up the car and a short race of one hour. I love the endurance race because I can uh, do something during the race uh, to change the result of the race. I'm Matt Campbell, Porsche and professional driver, driving for Dempsey Proton Racing in the 24-hour Le Mans and Fricadelli Racing in the 24-hour Nürburgring. As a young professional driver, you're sent to a lot of customer teams of Porsche. Maybe it's perceived as amateur racing, but it's extremely professional and certainly the level of the teams is very, very high and, and just as good as some of the factory teams. We had quite an unconventional way through motorsport. I always wanted to race cars, but never thought it would ever go this far. When I was 14, I got a little Datsun 1200 coupe. My grandfather and Arnie both raced similar cars. My mum really risked a lot to be able to give me an opportunity when I was young and uh, it was quite tough at home for a couple of years. But I got some driver coaching, stepped into Formula Ford. After that, Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge in Australia. That was the logical next step by trade and a builder, but I wanted to try and come to Europe and do something different. I was successful in the Porsche Junior shootout, becoming a Porsche Junior in 2017, getting some good results along the way. And this put me in good step for 2018, where I was able to move up to a Porsche young professional driver. The Dempsey Proton number 77, Matt Campbell, Christian Reid, and Julian Andla wins it. Winning on my on debut in the GTE AM class, this was the most important stage of my career so far. Even though I've had some fantastic results this year, I don't have a contract for next year. <laughs> this weighs on my shoulders, but I can only do the job I can do in the car. You know, obviously I've got to do a good job at Le Mans Nürburgring, but certainly nothing's safe. Who knows what's ahead of me. Yeah, all right. Well, I just got back to the pits now, so if you want to come down. We're in the same position as last year. All right, see ya. Bye. So far every year I've been in Europe, my mum and my auntie have come at least once and seen me because I don't get a chance to really go back to Australia during the middle of the year. They were also there last year for my victory and you know, this was a huge moment with them in my career. So hopefully we do the same again this year. Last meeting before the race, just to refresh our internal standards. Don't drive unnecessary close to each other but we drive flat out for sure because we want to win and do the best result. To be honest, we had not a great qualifying. We were starting P7, it was not really where we wanted to start. There was a lot of joke in the pre-race meeting saying, oh, but whatever, 
we don't expect you to come worse than P3 or P2 after the first hint. And I'm like, okay, you guys have a lot of confidence. We've got 61 drivers and teams that are willing to take part in this year's 24 Hours of Le Mans. It's the 87th edition of this fabulous event. An epic year in GT Pro, where we've got six manufacturers. During the race, be ready front or rear, I will tell you which one to start and I will tell you the target. Okay, that's it. It's just a 24 hour. Good luck, man. Enjoy it. I'm sure I'll see you at some point. I hope not. <laughs> race of the year is gonna start. It's a mix of a lot of different feeling. You feel the pressure, pressure is on you, but also you feel a lot of joy because you are part of this with Porsche, with the factory team fighting for the victory, fighting for championship. I started the last three times, and this is mentally a very tough moment. What I really like about the start is you have all these cars together fighting for position, and everybody knows that the position is very important to start the race. The start of the race is a part where everybody is at his hottest, and you can do a mistake a lot easier. If you don't keep your head cool, you can ruin everything in the first lap. This is an absolutely fantastic battle. Kevin is the guy who will be always at the big moments when there is big fights, he will always get everything out of the car. I like to do the start. I like to fight with the others. And I'm generally on the aggressive side. You have to be close sometimes to overtake, otherwise you never get there. And also, the faster you overtake people, better it will work. If you stay two, three laps behind them, they know your strengths and they know exactly what they have to do to keep you behind. On the screen, the battle for second and third. Kevin Estra has not given up the ghost. He is now right on the tailpipe of the Aston Martin. Looking to the A inside as they come to the second chicane. Oh. He's going to be on the outside now. now the Dickie comeback. team holds him off. Don't run out of road. And he does it. Estra's done it. 
I think he's got him now. He's got the inside position as they head down to Monsan. That's not a nice no. feeling, I'm sure. He's going to have second place. Well, it's been a fantastic first 60 minutes of the 87th running of the great race, the Le Mans 24 Hours 2019. Adrenaline is it's pretty high at that time because Kevin always starts. I take the second stint. I love it. I really like because you don't know where you get out in the race. You don't know what kind of traffic you get into. is jumping right in the first corner. I like that. It's a lot about instincts, that first two laps. I gotta feel it yourself, the grip level, just the feeling. How does the car fit the brake? Already one or two hours old, how do they feel? So it's a lot about instincts and about being open-minded quickly to get yourself in a comfortable situation. Antonio Garcia, Michael Christensen, and Nick Tandy, the top three as they head down through the Tetrouge S's. We were starting in P13, so we have 12 cars to overtake. During the race, every hour we spend on the back, it can be an unlucky situation. So our goal was step by step, overtake all the car and reach the top three position. Three, two, one. Green, track is back to green, track is back to green. It's a cheeky wee brake test wow. there. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. It's not easy, especially in Le Mans, and especially in the first team, when all the cars have new tires and are competitive, but we were doing our job in the proper way. probably P5, P6. Suddenly, Richard tell by radio that he hear a noise and something was broken on the car. It's very like something fell off on the right side of the car. Big vibration, big vibration. I don't know. Like we lost something, we lost something. What is straight? Big, big vibration right-hand side of the car, yeah, I think Yeah, Richard leads in the number 91 car, who's now dropped down to ninth. And we start back again. <laughs> A vibration like that, it's very difficult to drive, isn't it? Yeah, it's, the speeds are so high here, so the faster you go, the worse it gets. Oh, big luck up there. So immediately you are thinking about a mechanical problem on the steering. So do one more lap and we will investigate more into the data. Okay. It was really important to push Richard to stay on track because if it will beat in this moment, uh, we don't know what to do, and uh, it's easy to spend one minute to search for some problem. So I stay out, and we check again all the parameter. The problem is the front left. The Loic said that he find something that's on the left, that side shoulder. Inside, yeah. Just from inside. We understand that the problem was the front left and the brakes. Another set we have, yeah. one of free practices. Uh, from the qualifier. From the qualifier. Uh, we beat this lap and then we do driver change and we change also the front brakes. We call him into the pit and we change the system without losing time during the pit stop. 
This, I think, is the key point of the race of this year. Every time something happens in the race, you have one minute when you say, fuck, we have to find a solution to be back in the game. In endurance races like Le Mans, there's no rule on when are you doing more of a sprint race or more taking it easy and take care of the material and strategy. You have to be patient and know when you can be aggressive and when you just have to hold back. There are some times where you have to hold back a little bit. Communication with your engineer is very important because they can tell you, okay, this stint, you have to push the car until lap 10. So until lap 10, you can push, then you have to take care. And that's where also the team spirit is very important to have a good result. Okay, so the Ford is on old tires and the Ferrari is on new. Perfect. Okay, we're going to start the race in that's what he needed to know. There so he goes. goes on the inside of the Ford immediately. That's the difference in a new tyre. So that is a fantastic example of just what you do with the information you receive. Patrick Dempsey has always the priority is to develop young guns and this is one of our quickest young guns, and so the decision was easy. Matt had to go there. The 77 Dempsey Proton car leads that field. My goal when I started this journey was to be able to get to a factory driver level. At the moment, I'm on that path, and I'm very close to this level, whether that be on speed or the confidence out of the car or, or any of these top areas. Porsche are trying to groom you into this role as a Porsche works driver because you know, these are the best GT drivers in the world and they excel in all areas, but nothing's set in stone. This takes a toll on you, especially in endurance racing. Doing multiple stints in a race and uh, the focus has to be extremely high because if you make one mistake, it could be all for nothing and, and certainly with time, money and, and investment into this and being so much focused on the life, if you're the driver who makes a mistake, you're going to feel a lot of pressure for sure. Our strategy was consistently changing with you know our driver lineups and, and what we were trying to do to try and minimise lost time. So maybe at one stage you're going to have four hours rest, and in the end maybe you're only having a one stint break. But you know this is uh, this is part of it, and it's the same for everyone really. This is uh, endurance racing, so you know sometimes you just sleep wherever you can, um, whether that be under a desk or at the engineer's desk or just out the back somewhere, um, just to try and get as much sleep as possible. It's an epic traffic jam. <laughs> if the traffic jam was like this on the way to work in the morning, you wouldn't complain much, would you? Basically, always want to believe I don't crash cars. I can control them. If, if I go too far, I'll catch it. But at one point, it will, it will come and you'll end up in the wall. There's always this moment of, you know, could Marcel have been more patient? No, why should he? You know, right. he's got a race to win. And you go, if there's a gap, you go for it, because that's what racing drivers do. We sit here and we revel in this great nose-to-tail racing for 24 hours, but sometimes this is a byproduct of that. The quickest way to race a car is to be constantly on the limit. If you feel comfortable, you're probably not going quick enough. It's 7 o'clock here in France. This battle on screen now is phenomenal. Lawrence Vantor, the young Porsche superstar in the 92 car, and Vantor has been on a climb. 
this stint, he's had an absolutely fantastic he's Rising stint. up the order now, closing in on Daniel Serra's 51 Ferrari. We kind of saw that us and the Ferrari uh, were probably the two strongest cars. Um, we're always the two cars in first or second position and, and swapping around. So then you quickly understand, OK, they are, they are strong, we're strong as well, we feel confident, but they're the guys to beat. Uh, so you obviously start to look at them a little bit closer and try to understand from where can we make a difference? Where are they stronger, where are they weaker? Where is the move going to come? Because it surely is going to come. You need to be smart, it's like boxing. You need to look at your opponent and see what's the weakest link. How can I use that to make a difference? You have two options when you're behind somebody. You can go full risk for 10 laps, trying to overtake, uh, destroy your tires. Box, box, fuel only. Or you can save fuel and preserve your tires and, and wait for the pit stop. 35 seconds of fuel, code green, code green. 20 seconds. 10 seconds. Fast lane clear, fast lane clear. Head of ride the same as up. Oh, yes! Good job. There'll be some fist pumping there at the Porsche GT team. OK, buddy, we are leading the race. We are leading the race. You try to find the smartest way to go ahead, and yeah, that's, that's all part of endurance racing. Yeah. 10 p.m. local time, seven hours. <laughs> 16 hours of the race remaining. We're looking to the front of the GTE Pro Field, where Porsche is being chased by Ferrari and Corvette. It's Lawrence Van Tour leading in the GTE Pro class. It's been an amazing GTE Pro race so far, and it just keeps giving. Just save as much fuel as you can, and we'll update you on a new target. change. Double stint for Van Tour. Kevin Estra's at the wheel. together, uh, which worked out quite smart and quite good without taking any risks in the beginning of the race. We basically pretty quickly came to the top, fighting for the first second place, and we quickly understood that we had a, a good car. Up to there, everything was running really, really smooth. The car was, was perfect, so uh, it, was, it was fun. Kevin Escher back behind the wheel. There is an awfully long way uh, to the end of this race, yeah. and all sorts of things could happen.
quarter to four in the morning. And 92 is the class leader in the GTE Pro class. Okay, Kevin, pace is really good. Pace is very fast. Still got to try to look after the tyres for the double, and we still think the front axle will be the limit. I just passed the front straight, and I heard that the engine was doing a bit of a weird noise, um, different than normal. And I just pushed my head against the headrest to make sure that my earplug were in place because it's so loud, the car. And then it was getting worse and worse. So I said on the radio, I said, I have a strange noise from the exhaust or from the engine. Radio bad. Is everything okay? I think we have an exhaust. Exhaust broken. Okay, stand by. I have a smell in the car. Strange smell. Coffee, Kevin. I think we're going to have to pit. We're going to have to box. Guys, clear the garage. I think we have to change the exhaust. So we need 91 crew. It's a very tough moment because you're still racing. You have to do your best to keep the car on track, but you have a lot of stuff going through your mind, thinking of, oh, is the engine, you know, Braking is the gearbox braking. You don't know what's going on, but you still have 10 kilometers to go back to the pit lane. I almost went off in the Porsche corners uh, because I was a bit on the outside. There was some traffic. I was trying to pay attention in the mirrors if there was fire somewhere, uh, not to destroy the car. And uh, but yeah, luckily I made it to the pit. Porsche on pit lane, and that is the lead car, the 92 car. Kevin Est brings the car down pit lane. We're having breakfast, just coming out of a stint, which went really well. Race is running perfect, and uh, you're looking at the screen, all of a sudden you see your car going backwards in the garage. You pretty much know it's, it's done. It's so in the garage. The this is, is the in defending the garage. champion. Uh, because that means something's, something's wrong, something needs to be repaired, and it's not going to take 10 seconds. That is a huge turn of events. That was the car that was out well ahead of everyone else. Porsche mechanic swarming all over the 92. When I heard it on the radio, exhaust issue, something is wrong, it is going up, box, box. Then it's like uh, everything falls down around you. During the race, we hear only our own car. So I hear only car 91 and not car 92. We noticed that there was a discussion about the issue. Then we opened our ears. So for me, it was clear. I have to work with the guys under the car at the manifold. All the mechanics from 91, 92 formed one group and were making everything to make sure that the car gets out as quickly as possible. The engineer told me straight away, oh, it's the exhaust. We have to change the whole exhaust. And at that time, you really see all the faces very disappointed and hectic and a lot of stress going on. Everybody's running around. And, and I was just trying to think, OK, which position do we have to get to win that championship? Where's 91? You have a lot of stuff going to your mind. And these 20 minutes were felt like freaking 20 hours. on the World Championship is that eighth or better will do in any circumstances. But For the 92 car. The stupid thing is that there is so many pieces in front. There is a wheel large, there is the underfloor, some sensors from the engine. So you have to disconnect the complete manifold from the exhaust to fix the problem. Guys, just take your time and do it right. Now we just have to finish the race. They're under the car, the floor has to come off, then they change the exhaust, which naturally isn't cold, and nothing else up there above the floor is cold. It's all at hundreds of degrees Celsius. The engine is hot, the gearbox is hot, the exhaust is cooling down very fast, but the engine stays hot for one hour. It hurts many times, but you don't care. You have to fight for the win, you have to fight for the team, and you don't care about a little bit of pain. There are some parts in the car which are fixed with a very high torque, and you need a lot of muscle to get it out. But you get so much adrenaline, so normally it works very well. You don't have any information when you're in the car. You don't know where you are going to end up. 
that's a very tough moment mentally, but I, I never really gave up. I was just thinking, okay, think again, what do we have to do to win? You know, it's not over. Coming off the hijack. We, we can still win the championship. Everything's gonna be fine. Sounds as good as ever. Kevin extra. keep focus, Kevin. Well done, boys. Brilliant, well done. Go to your Porsche dealer and say, oh yeah, 911 exhaust change, uh, 20 minutes of labor, and they'll laugh at you. Yeah. I cannot describe it how I feel. It's uh, more than happy. It, you feel very great that you help your sister team and that the car goes back on track as fast as possible to fight for the championship. The mindset changed for all of us there. I'm sure you, you would think uh, never give up, but here we had to change focus. And the focus was to bring home the world championship. When we reach P2, just behind 51, 51 at the Pontour or had some problem with the tires. And so we were in P1. 51 had already do the pit stop and was really close to us, so it was not a real P1. But starting from P13, having the problem with the brake, it was good. These moments are the ones that give you the energy. At this point in the race, the only thing which counts was to see the flag. Car number 92, they need to finish the race. And then any mistake, anything which breaks, and the race is done, and the World Championship is gone. The pressure was so high to feel everywhere that Lawrence decided that he stepped down to make sure the two drivers who fight for the World Championship, they are doing the job and bring the car home. For Michael and Kevin, all they had to do was finish the race. Just stay out of trouble, be easy on the car, don't make any mistake. For sure it was probably harder for Lawrence than for us, because we have that goal in mind, Lawrence couldn't win anything. The only thing I could do at that moment was screw it for them. If I would have made one mistake, I would, I would never forgive myself for the next coming 10 years that I've ruined their world championship. And that kind of freaked me out, that thought, which in hindsight, maybe I should have been mentally stronger. Dempsey oh, Proton's sorry, sorry, only car remaining. Now, remember, this is another car in title contention. It is having a full rebuild. We had a front splitter failure, and then we had two more later in the race as well. This obviously takes some time to fix. This was bitterly disappointing, obviously losing a lot of time, and yet sort of obviously costing our race. 77 cars brought back onto pit lane, brand new front end. <laughs> After the exhaust disaster, it was hard to just keep yourself blurred. That was later on one of the last things, and I still have nightmares about this. Oh, that was close. You couldn't have put a piece of paper between those two cars. Quarter to nine, Sunday morning, a very good morning if you've just emerged from a tent somewhere after a heavy night last night. Porsche, the 92 team, led the race earlier on. I was just thinking, OK, think again. You know, it's not over. We, we can still win the championship. Everything, everything's going to be fine, trying to convince myself. But there's definitely a lot of moments where you think that ah, you work so hard and then 
you're gonna lose it on an exhaust, which never break, uh, basically. But it happened to break, you know, in that race on your car. So um, a lot of stuff going to your mind. Lounge above, and I saw Kevin coming in, then putting out the jacks. When you called me, I was like, Normally, it's not so good when someone calls you in the middle of the night. This is our GTE Pro class leader, Alessandro Pierre Guidi, in the 51 AF Corsa Ferrari. Two Le Mans before, this one was my car, 51 and now I was fighting with them. Everything in my mind was pushing to do the best, try to reach them. I got oil or fuel on the screen. With a car on the front of me, plus the cleaning, I see nothing. I agree. The only problem is that in this moment, uh, the engine is so slow that I don't see anything. Okay, no problem, I will be careful. Thank you, sorry. One car, second place. Fred Mako chasing down a podium finish. The last moments of the longest ever season, the super finale comes to its conclusion. The 51 AF Corsa Ferrari, Le Mans winners. If we are thinking about everything that was going on from the start of the race, the problem of the caliper, I think uh, we did a great race. Congratulations to the drivers' champions, Kevin Escher, Michael Christensen. I was pretty proud to finish that race, win the World Championship with Michael and the whole 92 crew, which has done a great season. But also frustrated, because we knew we had the car to, to possibly win the race again. But that's motorsport. It wasn't a result where we wanted, but in the end, we got to the end of the race and we finished without a scratch on the car. So I think that's an achievement in itself in a 24-hour race. We didn't win the more, but Kevin and Michael got the World Championship. I felt happy and maybe helped a little part of it, so uh, it was good. We had not a perfect race and uh, still a really good result for us. I think the adrenaline from the next race, the next challenge, wake me up, and now we want to do better. If I say three. Angie, mate, good luck. Good job, Angie. And so, it's a good mood in this moment. I feel well, ready for the challenge, and we hope that it will be good. Le Mans was frustrating. We didn't have any uh, damage or contacts or anything like that, so us as drivers were able to get the job done, but uh, there was just some things out of our control that sort of set us back. You know, hopefully I get another opportunity to go back to Le Mans in the future. It's gonna take a bit of a toll, but you know, now going into the next 24, I really have to be on it.
The Nürburgring is for sure the most brutal and dangerous track in the entire world. The track is so demanding, mentally and physically. You're in the middle of the forest, you're going around 200 kilometres an hour, and you go into a blind corner and instinct takes over. You know, it's on edge. The walls are extremely close, there's no margin for error. The green hell, if you do a mistake, you can end up in the tree. That's a race I, I've always want to win. It's my favorite place on earth and the most horrible place on earth at the same time. There are some proper corners where if you would make a mistake here, God knows what happens. Le Mans GT and the Nürburgring GT3 is completely two different types of racing. In Le Mans, we have a factory team and we race as Porsche. At Nürburgring, there are only customer teams, like Manta Racing, Fricadelli Racing and others. So you see the same people under a different name. So in front of Nürburgring in Germany, it's, it's, it's super big. You have drivers here which are heroes, which if you go out of the Nürburgring, nobody knows them. It's its own place. The first time I arrived here, I was like, what's this? <laughs> if you come from the mall, it's like you go from, from Hollywood to my hometown without saying anything bad about here because I, I love being here. It's just very, very different, very old school. I agree that I wouldn't see Alonso coming here. <laughs> Nürburgring 24 hours is a really special race. You have over 180 starters with different classes. On the top class, which is the GT3, there will be over 30 cars fighting for the win. If the Le Mans drivers are working really fine, you want to keep these guys together. In Nürburgring, we need to run with four drivers. So around Lawrence, Kevin and Michael, we had to add one guy. And we decided to add Earl. He says quite highly likely to fuck it up, so... Going into Nürburgring, we had some mixed feelings. Nürburgring was the first race of our new GT3R. After Le Mans, with uh, a broken exhaust, we were all scared of reliability issues. This year we have car number one because this car won the previous year, the 24 hours of no program. It's difficult that one car can win two years in a row. Everybody's watching at you. This car was uh, bouncing uh, and struggled with the uh, aero vibration all the weekend. There is still this vibration, but uh, I don't know anymore what, what to change. It is a vibration, yeah? Yeah. What do you do in the second sector? If we are honest, we all have the same feeling, like something is a bit strange, the instability is more, and we fight with the car. The car is not nice to drive, and the car is something weird, and when you try to push with the car, you are close to crush every corner, but also airpin at 60k per hour. No? I think the biggest problems are coming from the tires and that we have no front aero. If I had the behavior in the right that I had in the left, I would have been a lot quicker. We have to check everything to be sure that... But before everything... to check everything, is two days that I'm telling everybody that the main difference is uh, the aero. The? Aero for the pitch sensitivity. And the original plan was we try with the 260 spring to control the, the behavior, yeah. the platform. Then we can look even at the other smaller things. This one was the, the plan on the table from the first day. It's just again that we do this before the race. I mean, we have the warm-up, which is positive, uh, better than Le Mans, for sure. But we should be sure that the car is 100% as we want, all the small details, all the screws, 100% as we expect it is. 
also spend now a bit time to look the data 100%. We, we need to have this now. Yeah. We can see the data, but we have to update uh, at least in one hour and take the decision because uh, if we had to do the change, uh, they have to be done before tomorrow morning uh, at nine. Then we can look into the data, but to prepare the setup and everything is better to do now as soon as we have the, uh, the car and everybody is relaxed. It's important uh, in a meeting like this uh, that Fred show that he's not happy about the car. But for me, sometimes it's really hard to understand uh, how they can feel some small difference due to the setup. The driver is in the car. It's not a problem. No. He should be always our reference for the race. We didn't find something obvious, so we changed the steering rack for safety. And so basically the mechanics uh, had to work. At the end, uh, they finished to work around uh, half past one in the night. These uh, two hours of extra work, uh, don't let them go immediately to sleep, but it was uh, an important job to do this uh, racing. Buongiorno amore, oggi giorno gara. Quando ti svegli chiamami. Buon risveglio, ciao. I have more stress to approach this race because it's new for me and I feel that I'm not fully prepared because uh, I'm doing for the first time after a long time and I feel that I miss something. Uh, Piccadilly is uh, at the Nürburgring since years. They are all like a big family and they always want to have a pro car. And they invested a lot of money, a lot of effort in this pro car and we decided to give them a group of drivers. We were convinced they can go for the win and that's where we put Matt in. It's my second year with Frickadelli. Last year was my first attempt on the 24. We recommend you to go lower with a new tire. I don't know if you choose already what you want, which tire is hard. You start with the hard. The main tire also starts hard. I think it's a good choice. So, only one to sway you in, we call it in German. Car number 31, Matt starting, okay? The main thing is don't make any mistake. If we want to win this race, try to find the luck we need, okay? Change the brake, uh, bleed the, the steering, one all around. Yeah, and then it's fine. Thank you. So, all of us agree that we had to be on rear wing three. If you attack too much the braking, the rear stability is still there. After a Wolf corner in Matt Gutfeld, when I enter the left, he's like, wow, massive slide. So overall it was positive because it was easier to drive, but we still, for me, we're still missing something. Now is no more moment to do big change, I think. Right. Maybe we should just keep the car and start the race. This is a crowd like no other. I mean, you think you're in a big event when you're at Le Mans, but uh, something about this, with 158 cars lined up on the grid in three separate groups, it is, it's, it's an absolutely phenomenal atmosphere down here, purely because of the scale of the thing. It was crazy, you know? There's so many fans on the grid. It's really hard to make it to your car. It probably takes 10 minutes to get from your box to the car on the grid. So you have these cars, they're all, like, formed up like a normal grid. Yes. Ours are all on like the 45, like the quality race. It's only for the top 30, but... I was lucky enough to be starting the race, so that's incredibly, you know, special in itself. To be starting a race in fifth position such as this, you know, it was uh, very cool and certainly a highlight of my career so far. Hello. Thank you. Thanks, Matt grew up at the racetrack from basically when he was born. Thanks. Driving from the age of six. 
he could reach the pedals, he could drive. I never discouraged him from doing it. You have dreams, you've got to follow your dreams. In his earlier days, he had so much pressure on himself to do well because he knew he had to do well to move on. We didn't have the budget to go any further. The home loan got added on to quite a few times. Without the good old bank, it, it doesn't go too far. The race is going to be a half past three start local time. It's just gone five past here at the Nurbo Ring. It's time for drivers to get on board. Ready? Yeah. See you later. Enjoy. Kevin never won there, so I know that he will attack on this track. I'm really scared there. It's the moment where I, where I don't want to leave him alone. <laughs> It's definitely harder for her than for me. Everybody knows that Nürburgring is, is the, the most difficult track we, we go on and, and a lot of stuff can happen. We get set for the start of what promises to be an enthralling 24 hours. <laughs> It's quite a lot of emotions. We know we are able to win, but we also know we are not starting from the front, which means we'll have to go full attack from the start. The teams look on, ready for action. There's something like 600 drivers, there's over 150 cars. There has to be a, a huge amount of understanding and cooperation between the faster drivers and the guys that are being lapped, because obviously the tradition is to stay online, isn't it, if you're the slower car and let the faster car do the hard work. But um, even in practice yesterday, we saw some very near misses, didn't we? Marrow Engel, Lance David Arnold, Kevin Estra and Pierre Kaffer as the four drivers at the sharp end, still working hard to retain temperature in their Michelin tyres. So, here they come side-by-side side formation. The 47th running of the Total ADAC 24 hours of the Nürburgring about to get underway. And they're already going because the red light has been extinguished. We're in business. It's blast off and a good getaway by Marrow Angle to the outside line. Good. Kevin Estra, a bit of dust kicked up into the air as one or two run out of road. So far, so good. Angle leads Arnold, leads Estra. And then in fourth place, looks like being Matt Campbell. Kevin Estra trying to go around the outside there of Lance David Arnold. He looks very, very eager to try and get on with the job, doesn't he? He wants to get himself into second place. When Kevin is on the car, all his competitors are scared of him because he will just push like hell to make sure he passes. And now the bravery is going to come into play. Now you'll see who the real stars are. He will just give everything. And here comes the move. Absolutely side by side. And Kevin Estra goes by. The strategy on the Nürburgring is pretty much the same than in Le Mans. You want to be at the front and always controlling the race. But now Astro gets stuck on the outside line, way up the curve, but I'm coming through, says Kevin. We had a great car. We had the pace to be in front and to fight for the first place. Kevin's performance at the beginning of the race was uh, completely crazy. It was just flying. We had a hard battle with the Mercedes in front. But look at that, the lead gap is down. It's all three are together, aren't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. We wanted to catch him up, and we could see on the straight he was fighting with him. On track, nothing counts. He just wants to be first. As the race leader is under real attack, and here comes Remy Kevin up alongside Kevin S makes the move. Toe to toe, the Porsche will go through, no, it won't because Mario Engel stands his ground on the inside line, gets the place back. Here you have got everything that's good about GT racing. We were uh, trying to push really hard, uh, especially the driver had to do a lot in this race because they take risk every corner, every overtaking. We were uh, starting in P7. We reach uh, P3, so was the right way to approach. Uh, yeah, there you go. Look. They got caught at the, on the apex of the uh, carousel, didn't he? And Pile around the outside. Campbell decides to follow suit. And 
have a book to do. Number one has an issue, number one has an issue. Okay? Try to do your best. We are here ready. Copy, copy. Looks like a puncture. Looks like a puncture. The problem is that we have this pontoon probably at the start of, of the notch life. So it means that we had to drive the car for 20 kilometers. You will change it now, both sides. For the moment, just the rear right. And then we decide. How much less uh, camber? Half, 0, 04, 0, 05. Camber and two. Drama for number one. And Michelin has gone pop, hasn't it? So he is now dropping down the order. The time loss is so painful. There's nothing you can do about it, is there? No. But now they're checking for any damage, aren't they? And there's a wheel. There's not much tyre left. There isn't, is there? This lap with the rear left pontour, uh, he destroyed the differential. So <laughs> it was an extra problem uh, that uh, we try to fix and to adjust the setup in the best way for the driver uh, to have again uh, a drivable car uh, for the night and for the difficult moment. It lost a huge amount of time and fell back into 35th place. Yeah, some problem with the diff. First, uh, the tire problem. We see in the next pit stop if we can fix. Two laps. Okay. Look how close they are now. Mm. He's right on the back of him. If he could use the slipstream as well, then maybe he can overcome any advantage that Muller might have. Either you commit to it, you do it, or you don't do it. The Porsche is edging closer in the aerial wash of the Mercedes AMG. It's getting closer. They're coming towards the Bilstein Bridge now, and all of a sudden, the gap starts to come down much quicker as he gets into the hole of the air made by the Mercedes. Drifts over, two wheels on the grass, the pass on the grass for the lead. Three wide under the Bilstein Bridge. That is extraordinary. Absolutely incredible. Audacious. I can't think of anything else to say to that other than, wow. And even from the Mercedes Arena, there's applause for that. <laughs> and boy, did he deserve that. Is that the move of the race? That was one of the scared moments in my life. To be the hero or the loser, there was just like this. Two uh, feelings inside myself. One feeling was, well, he will get him. Second feeling is crazy. We should get him out of the car and shout at him. Yeah, Kevin is Kevin. <laughs> he only has one mode. It's like on or off. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna slap him when he comes back. <laughs> I told him why why he did this, and he said, I don't know, I need to. So, yeah. <laughs>where this race is going next. Amazing motorsport. And we still have 20 hours and 48 minutes of this race to enjoy. The two cars run by Mento Racing. Um, you know, full of the main cars, they're the ones that the fans are always watching. They're full of senior Porsche drivers. But yeah, let's say we were the younger car. So uh, for us to come under the radar a little bit this year and have a really strong performance was quite surreal. In fourth position, it's the Fricadelli car of Matt Campbell. But at the end, it was still very early in the race. Sometimes it's, it, it can be out of your control. 31 Porsche, Matt Campbell. Oh, my oh, word! Uh, the Porsche actually, despite pinballing off the guardrail, that is the get out of jail free car to end or get out of jail free car. And that is the save of the weekend. Oh, lucky. What a fucking steam. The last one or the one before? Fucking both. And the one before that had three. Fucking idiots. The car's fine now, but far out. Could have had three massive accidents just because 
I've either put yellow out too late or it's too close to a car in front and then Bay did something stupid. So I think we're lucky that the car's still fast. And the biggest problem was for the driver. When they go on throttle, they have huge wheel spin. During every stint, they learn how to manage this. And we've got uh, the number one car into the pits, David. That's six laps. <laughs> In comes number one, there's going to be a driver change as well. The driver were great because uh, during the p-stop, the driver that he get off from the car learned something more about uh, how to manage this problem with the differential, and so he gave the tips to the other uh, driver that going into the car. And it was cool because it was a team job. It is very nearly 10 o'clock on Saturday night here at the Nürburgring. You cannot take your eyes off this for the moment. Everything was going well and we were looking forward to have a great result. I think around uh, one o'clock. We understand that we were back in the game. A communication by radio from Richard, I crash. Not sure that I understand really well what he say because uh, Richard never crash. If the car is fine in front, we will feel it, and then we can inside and try to fix it. Can you come back to the box? We will fix the car. So immediately we want to be again in the game and we want to finish the race. Uh, his answer was uh, clear. Look, I was talking to him again. I was talking to him again. I was talking. I didn't hear. Guys, what? He said his car is fucked. He cannot continue. Sorry, guys. Car is stopped. Oh, in one minute, in less than one minute, you realize uh, that. Uh, you were thinking to do a good race uh, and this finish, and it's like a, a cold shower. <laughs> For sure, everybody in this race uh, have done a great job, and we are sorry to don't win. <laughs> Tough day. Yeah. yeah. Now then, uh, Richie was so sorry, but he said, car was good. He yeah. was pushing because uh, to finish nine, uh, or push or nothing, and the Cayman didn't break. Yeah. Next year. Yeah. yeah. really doesn't know anything that happens during night on the Nordschleife. You know, the, the TV coverage you can't see as much. Uh, with so many cars still on track, there's so much happening at all times. And this year I did a lot of driving in the night and, uh, you know, there's so many close calls happening all the time and, you know, so many circumstances that are just out of your control and somehow you just make it through. Driving in the night at Nürburgring 24, uh, nothing else really comes close to it. It's so dark, you know, the speeds are just as high, if not faster than during the day because of temperatures. When you're doing a night stint to maybe 2 a.m., you're driving around and there's fireworks, there's campfires, you can smell the sausages cooking. You know, you can even feel your eyes stinging sometimes from the smoke from the fires. A lot of people would look at this and say, it'd be stupid to do something like this, but I think as a driver, if you can do well in this race and get through it, 
you know, that's when you really feel a big achievement. I really don't know how else to explain it. It's, uh, it's bloody awesome. Im Moment wird die Zeit viel gemacht, denn, weil es gibt zwei ganz lange Code 60 Zonen wegen Crash. Und da wird der Zeit gemacht, weil ich, ich will King keine anderen Leuten irgendwas Assi sagen oder so, aber ja. Ja, Code 60 ist 60 und Doppelgelb ist 120 und manchmal fällt einer vor der 80 oder 30. Und du fährst in der und du siehst die Sekunden runter, fällen, fällen, fällen. Und es ist sehr schwierig, dann ruhig zu bleiben. Ich habe ein oder zweimal mal geschrien. Seven o'clock in the morning in the Nord Schleifer. Since before dark, our race leader is the number 911, the Grello Manti Racing Porsche. It leads by two and a half minutes, which equates at the moment to about a quarter of a lap. <laughs> leader is in the pits. Uh, Lawrence Vantor went to getting into the car. Uh, Lawrence Van Thorpe now threads his way over the jump down at Fansgarten. He's got a very busy road ahead. Look, the back markers, one, two, three of them. There is a man who is on the limit. There's a big crash. Please be very careful. It's code 60. It's code 60. Yeah. Please uh, check, guys, check the connector. I cannot hear. I cannot hear. My radio wasn't working for two laps, so I had no communication. And uh, most of the time, the team warned us uh, because it's not obviously not always even easy to see. Still, the stories come, don't they? Still, the dramas happen. Yeah. And the first signal I missed, Sarva took him, went past the corner, and I saw a car crash with a security car, and I was like, shit. <laughs> it almost looked like it was. Slow zone. slow zone, yeah, it was. Except the Porsche, if it was a slow zone, goes it for it. Didn't get the message. No. I just blew through to this zone. I was sitting in the Porsche lounge, and then we heard, oh, there could be an issue with the yellows. But we couldn't see them on any of the camera views, what we had. And then the paper, you know, came from the race director with this 5 minutes and 32 penalty, which was a lot. I was very angry. Uh, I left the garage and I needed some time just for myself to calm down, just trying to get out this frustration. What was tough is that we had such a lead in the race that we just had to kind of cruise around, you know, finish that race. And that's where we got a bit angry with Lawrence because at that stage of the race, it shouldn't happen really. It can, but it shouldn't. To go up to, to your team and to Kevin, Michael and Earl and say them in the face, I just probably fucked this up for all of us. That's, that's probably the hardest thing. He said, I think I fucked up. Uh, I didn't see a flag. For sure, I was too quick in a, in a double yellow in a code 60. I'm sorry. Good for us, bad for them. For us, it was a great opportunity to capitalise on the penalty that the Mentai car was going to get. Game on for second place, the battle between the Frickadelli Porsche and the number 48 HTP Mercedes. Uh, we were always battling with the Mercedes, it was always very close. That's the Frickadelli Porsche going ahead of Gertz now for second place. We got into second, so really on it. This is our race. We were really competitive. It was uh, really exciting at times, let's say. I think at that stage we were maybe three minutes behind a Mentai car. With, uh, not, not too long to run in the race. We were in a fantastic position to win that race. Uh, the tyre went down extremely quick 
and within a space of 500 metres, the tyre had already come off the rim. I ran over nothing. You know, three cents to go. It's a big shame, but uh, yeah, still anything can happen. But yeah, that one was out of our control. Unfortunately, it was a, a bigger problem than we initially thought. Within two laps, we had to retire due to a uh, mechanical issue from the, the tyre failure. The Abilon cars, the Fricadelli cars, often very quick, but I don't know, they often just seem to suffer from bad luck as well. Next time. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. That was good, man. <laughs> That's no luck. No luck. That's it. And only no luck. The rest was okay. And it feels worse now, too, because everyone else yeah, is still going yeah. no. They're not finished. The Audis uh, wanted to win. They crash. The Mercedes crashes. So yeah, but it is. It's like yeah. this could have been their year. They've never won the race before. With so much effort and uh, money going into this race, they really look to be achievable this year. I was crying in the corner by myself. What do you do in a family if someone did a mistake and he feels bad? You have to build him up. We had only one goal when Lawrence was back in the box. Build him up and make him a fighter again. He needs to forget this moment as quickly as possible. I want to get back in. It's like when you're a child, when you fall off your bike, the best thing to forget about is to get back up and, and start riding again. I think we can do it. So did just book. Yeah, exactly. I'm just saying we need to catch one minute yeah. 20 to win and I think we can do it. Not too crazy, but they will, you know, they will cruise now. So we can come back a lot. I've already got a hashtag. Make Larry great again. Take a bit key of the rear tires, don't overstress them directly, but you can push. Bobby. We are B2, we are B2. Phoenix Audi is P1. What's the gap? What's the gap? Gap is one minute, one minute, 24, one minute, 24. Come on! I was so full of emotions and so angry that for that hour, I just got in the car and, and just completely destroyed myself by driving as quick as I can. And we knew that he wanted to do a payback, which means to push like hell to bring in the car in a fight for the win. We lost a bit of traffic, but we will get some, we will get some. Gap down for the lead, he's down to 32 seconds now. Good job, good job, Laurent. Box, 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 driver change, driver change. We talk all together and we said, okay, who want to do the last stint? The engineers and all the drivers pointed a bit on me and said, you seem confident, you made the pass at the beginning and you brought us up there, so it should be you uh, finishing it. Kevin said he's ready for the fight and let's try it. Until the flag falls, you never know what can happen. If the Audi has a puncture or has a small issue, then we could still win it. But it's also risky because then you are in the spotlight and if you do a mistake, you're gonna look like an idiot or like the loser. And that it could be a stint where I would go too far and I would do a mistake and crash the car. So the car's away. It's all down to the driver now, isn't it? Good reception for Kevin Ast. The fans at the Mercedes Arena looking forward to a fight now. Marker in the way, up the curb, pounces on him, gets through. Estra throwing everything to this, he has nothing to lose now. There's that Est in the background getting close to the wall, again on the dirt. And Kevin Est is throwing everything at this, no question. For me, this was really a bad moment. 
took some medicaments to cool down because it was I was like this. I know that he he would win or crash the car. Just, uh, just keep pushing, let's keep the pressure on, but uh, not over the limit. I want you back safe. Sprinting to the line to try to gain ground. And Kevin S flashing the lights will come to the checkered flag. Now slows right down, takes the flag, takes second place. Kevin S. I felt personally proud of myself. I don't know, maybe uh, the winner on the hearts of the spectators on the Nürburgring. But also frustrated and angry about how the race happened with the pace we had and the easy lead. It was a bit of a mixed feeling. We've been through so many different emotions in the last two, three weeks. I was the reason why we lost the race. It was me. That's the pure hard fact. That's quite a bit of a mess in your mind to get over. In endurance racing, there are two races everyone wants to win. Le Mans and Nürburgring. Last year we did the perfect job on both races. Now we are looking already forward to the next one. Buongiorno amore. Ho dormito tanto stanotte, ma ho riposato. Non tantissimo, ma adesso andiamo a spa per il test e pronti a ripartire. Ti chiamo quando sono a spa. Ciao. We were so close, but we were so far. It was a tough one to take. You know, I want to come back and try and do it again, that's for sure. If you have high and you have lows, if it's low, it's tough. But you have to move on and be ready 100% for the next chapter. That's a really important part of endurance. We were not perfect, but life doesn't stop. Racing never stops. For sure. It's always tough to motivate yourself after a race like Nürburgring where you think you had the win and in the end you just finish second, which is nice, but it's not where we want to be. Then you go to Spa on the next day, being tired from two 24-hour race, but you have to be fully on it and focused because you know that if you do a good job there, you're gonna have a good car for the next year. I think we are just addicted to winning and I think it's the spirit of endurance. We want to win the next year and we will never stop. You have to be tough, you have to be consistent, you have to be reliable, you have to work very hard, and that's, that's endurance. <laughs>